And is that where I'm going to stop recording too? Yes, yeah, so there's two ways you can stop recording. At the very end of the meeting, you can go back in there to stop recording. And if you want to, or you can also click down here uh, where it says leave. It says okay. end the meeting. Okay. End the meeting, throws everybody out. It may be in remotely and stops the recording. Oh, okay. If you just leave the meeting, it kind of runs and keeps going in the background. So if you just end the meeting, then okay. it will do both for you. Okay. It throws everybody, it doesn't leave anybody in so there. You have to end the meeting, not leave. Okay. Right. Or start, go down to the three dots, don't start. And stop. And stop. Yeah. Okay. But they, it does it kind of all in one there for you. Okay. We're um, recording for. Yep, you're recording now. And so your meeting's going, it will be recorded. We'll then we'll be able to use them um, with we'll everybody else. And if you, um, if somebody does join the meeting, it may say, hey, you have somebody in the lobby. Right. Do you want to admit them? It'll say it'll there'll be a button to click admit that lets them in. I believe the way that we have the town one set up, it just lets anybody in. Yeah. Um, there's nobody in right now, so a few things I can't really show you other than see the little people here. Yep. The people will show you who's actually in the meeting. Right. So there's those are the people that you were invited. Yep. And then there's um, other people from chat, uh, whatever that means. I think maybe there was some ch chat maybe in the previous meeting you guys okay. had. Um, but in here, if you want to control them, you would hover over the person. For instance, say somebody didn't mute their uh, mm -hmm. their uh, account, and there was a dog bar in the background. You can hover over them and mute them. Okay. You can't unmute them, but you can you can at least quiet them down. You can also throw them out from here if, they, if you need to do that. <laughs> if somebody got in, it was just being silly. Right? <laughs> um, so. If you guys have any questions, so there's things just okay. But other than that, you got it from here. Right. When you're done, um, once you end the meeting, mm -hmm. you can go down here to the just go ahead and log out. Okay. Make sure you log yourself out. I'm gonna leave these instructions here because that is yeah. I believe in here. Okay. Um, That's actually, these might be small. Yeah, these ones don't have it. But you okay. definitely want to log out, log out. at okay. the very yeah, just hover over your name. So curious. Um and it means she not logged out? She had. It always will tell you who, it will remember who the last person okay. that logged in was. Okay. So thinking if you wanted to log in again. Okay. Um, Good. But yep, yeah, so that's great. Right. For somebody. All right. Nice. You need anything, just give me the yeah, okay? Thank you, Juan. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, and excuse me, before we let him go, do you know um, we've had to put off the um, architect's presentation a number of times? And the last time was because you were told that the meeting was going to be a restless select board meeting is going hybrid. Um, and we, he's coming down from New Hampshire. He's put a lot of work and time into this. We'd rather have him present in person. Okay. So, but um, do you. Was we're, we're, our meetings are all in person and on, on the high. Okay. So, okay. But we'd like to present to the select board in person. Yeah, sure. You know? And um, it also was suggested to me by Laura um, St. John Dupuis mm -hmm. that your next several meetings are all going to be budget related. Sure. Okay. I'd love to do it before, before um, Mark leaves. Yeah, let, us, let, me, um, let me just check. Uh, let me find out which one is going to be a light meeting with, with the. Yes. Um, with the uh, with the budgets, the first one was ridiculous because we had, we had two weeks worth. But let me find a light one, and okay. we can probably just slide in the back. That would be great. Back Good. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Could you do me a favor and just send me an email so I don't forget? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay. So I think we'll officially start the meeting now at ten ten. And uh, we did this last time because we'll just do it. We'll go around the room and listen to everybody. Okay, so I'm Earl Perlman. I'm co chair of the COA. Carol Kotras, I'm treasurer of COA. Betsy Edsel, vice president, Friends of Mended Numbers. Darcy Garso, president of the Friends of Mended Numbers. Amy Wilson Kent, Senior Service Director. And Vanders Blue, Secretary, Council on Aging. Okay. And as we always do, let's start uh, with the Secretary report and give us a chance to uh, review the notes from the last meeting. Okay. Yeah, Secretary, I'm going to go ahead and start with the last meeting.
I had corrected this. If you read the very first line, please follow the meeting to board at 11 or 7 a.m. It was supposed to be 10 or 7 a.m. Okay. And she caught that, and I sent her um, the call, revised notes. Sorry, so what I probably did is I probably took your first first one and threw yeah, it right into my. Okay. okay. So the revised notes do say 10 or 7 a.m. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Do we have a motion to accept the uh, secretary's report? I make a motion that we um, accept the secretary's report. Okay. Uh, any further comments or questions or anything that anybody wants to add or change? Okay, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. We'll go on to uh, the treasurer's report. Uh, the treasurer's report, this is Dara. Uh, January of 2022, um, we had um, expenses for $50 um, for an appreciation gift in the COA um, pantry account. It were donations $802. And that, um, I believe, included um, a donation um, one three individual donations and that's what we have for the month of january and i just can i point out um, those three donations one of them was for a high school student who um, raised funds and also used her allowance um, to donate about 100 i think it was about 108 dollars um, to that to that event to that program and then also we received a donation from the bank of new hampshire i it was very generic. It was from New Hampshire. It was fifty dollars, and and I, I was looking to see if it was in memory of someone, and it wasn't. Um, it was anonymous. It was just anonymous. Yep. Thank you, Carol. Hey, um, Amy, do you want to say anything now? No, you know what? I, I've got a lot to say, but it's going to be kind of interdispersed throughout okay. all of our topics, so we'll save time now. Okay. Uh, would either one of you, Dottie? Or, yeah, yes, you I, I will. Thank you. Um, Dottie Garso, and um, I'd like to talk a little bit about what's happening at the Friends of Men and Elders. Uh, number one, we're doing a membership drive, trying to get our dues um, caught up and paid. So if anyone wants to pay their dues, please let me know. We're also changed our scholarship program to two $500 scholarships this year. Um, and Betsy Etzel is heading up that committee. She's uh, working very hard to get that all finished and present it. Um, then on the 14th at 10 o'clock, we're having a Valentine's Day party um, before our regular meeting at 10.30. So I think that's about it. So people are coming at 10 though. 10 o'clock. Yes. And I just want to say, I want to publicly thank you guys for your generous thoughts towards our current youth because, um, you know, $500 goes a long way to help pay for books and whatnot, so it's really good. Thank you. Any okay, so now we'll go on with the whole business and- For uh, Earl, Earl could, I, could I ask if we, uh, excuse me, if we could jump to um, the, under the FY23 um, budget, there's the Friends of Elders funding request. Okay. Can we bring that up since we're talking with the Friends right now? Sure. Because last month we didn't, I think, come to a conclusion as to, normally every year the COA presents um, a letter with a list of things that we are you know, requesting assistance with. And of course, during the last two years, that was scaled back because of the pandemic. So. Um, and I have, you know, several of them I can give you to show you. But so just so we could have it kind of in writing, the friends are meeting on Monday. I know you folks would, you know, have something or we'll want to present something. So I think last year we just requested money for beautification, $500, and rug and chair cleaning. Um, fly the flag. And fly the flag. So, but well, we didn't request that last year. That was kind of something that happened along the way. Um, rug and chair cleaning, we ended up doing that through our own budget after all. So, um, but yes, you're right. Fly the flag is something we very much want to do. And I have been trying to get their um, 
I need to get them to supply us with a W9, the tag, so that we can create a vendor number. I've been trying for years. I cannot get it. That's why we utilize the friends because the friends doesn't have that requirement. You, you're able to pay them based on an invoice that's submitted to you. So, and that I believe is, is $150 for fly the flag. And it's, the flags are shown what, five times a year. It's, it's remarked about, it's just really shows patriotism. And so, yeah, that's probably those two things. But other things, just to make you aware, in the past, we had the friends do the um, annual copier maintenance. Um, we've been paying for that the last two years. Entertainment, $1,000. Um, we haven't had any. Okay. Well, the entertainment we've had has all been covered by the Cultural Council. Those grants, prior grants are all done. We have new grants coming on. Um, beautification, we said yes, uh, we would like to ask you for that. Um, the director's discretionary fund, there's always been a discretionary fund. In my 14 years here, we've never used it. I think that was done for the purposes of if something happens, and um, for example, I think I saw in handwritten records that we needed new tires for the, the VN years ago, and it was during the summer when the friends weren't going to meet. The director had discretion to, to do something like that. Of course, Todd is a little resident of the friends for sure. Um, subsidized fitness programs, that's something that we've, the friends have always done, although we've had grant funding in place right now, so we don't need that. And then program supplies and food. You folks have been wonderful when it comes to the veterans appreciation, the senior tea, ice cream social, general craft supplies. And so we've previously asked for funding for, for that. And that might be something that we want to keep in play. Um, but I'm going to I'm going right. to give these to you and you can see what we've mm -hmm. requested. My suggestion would be beautification, fly the flag, and maybe crafts. Um, program supplies and funds. I believe and all of these things are already written into our 2022 budget and that we are certainly willing to continue. So the, what's happened is your new treasurer just carried them over. They should never, they, they were kind of appointed year after year right. when we asked for them and we haven't asked for them. Oh. No, we haven't asked. So I still have the right. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I won't. We, I think the COA understands that the friends has not done um, a vast amount of it. If I'm going to say that, yeah. No, you're not asking for the annual topic to your maintenance. No, no, we've been paying for that. For the beautification, play the play, entertainment. Yeah, I, entertainment for sure. Um, I noticed in the notes last month, Pay had suggested, which is the Pay suggested we ask the friends to continue funding holiday gift days. What was that for? Holiday during? I think well, that's something we did during the pandemic because people couldn't come in in person. We gave the gift bags and we did it 50 50. COA, friends, I think we both did $100. I don't know that that's going to be necessary, but that could also fall under program supplies. Yes. So, um, and I don't know if you feel, you know, we can, we can submit a letter on Monday and the friends can discuss it to see if you feel that it's reasonable, if it's something that you can, you know, assist us with. You might say, you know, we don't have a thousand dollars this year for entertainment. We've done that in the past, maybe next year, maybe this year we only have 500, um, you know, things like that. So, but my suggestion would be beautification 500, fly the flag 150, projects, um, support for projects 500, and then entertainment, um, you know, whatever, we can make a suggestion and see what the friends want to do about that. Um, but we do have three cultural council grants in play, so that's good. Do you want this list to go in the note? Yes. Um, yeah, because okay, I'm going to type up a letter. Yeah. 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 Those four items. Um, and again, if you, if you if you feel that you know, if you feel, for example, on projects, you just assume kind of do that on a case by case basis. When we are doing the senior T, when we are doing the veterans program, because then, but then what would happen is you folks would be voting at your monthly meeting. Well, do you want to help with the veterans pro veterans appreciation next month, or if you want to do it? One's fell swoop now. We'll know that the money is there right. and been appropriated. Did you say something about the coffee machine, too? 
So we've been paying for that. Um, we've been paying for that the last two years because the friends were not, you know, meeting, and uh, we've been paying for that out of our own contract um, labor line item. So we've actually had the money because because when the center wasn't open, we didn't have as many expenses. We did have funding there. So. Mm -hmm. And then also for the past two years, we haven't been able to raise any points. The friends right. haven't yeah. we took that into consideration. Yeah, that's why we haven't been, you know, asked because normally those 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 um asks they're quite quite a few, you know, several thousand. But not wanting to correct your new treasurer, she just carried over what had been voted on. I think for 2020 would have been the last time. And then 2020 was cut off. Right. So then she carried it over to 2021 and now 2022. And, and I do think that when you were reading, Amy, you were not there, mm -hmm. but we did uh, vote to accept the treasurer's report as written. Therefore, I think that we're all in agreement that those things have already been um, okay. But we hadn't asked for them. We haven't asked for them for three years. So, so you're asking and I'm saying, okay. Okay, good. <laughs> So, so since you're you are here, approved, <laughs> since you're here too, something that's kind of in conjunction with that, um, this entertainer that we've had before, Orchestra of One, who is excellent. Um, she's done all different kinds of programs, and specifically, she's done um, an Irish program. I contacted her about coming in um, March. She used to be $125 with a $25 um, fee yes. because of her because of her distance. She's gone up to 200 and I didn't find out that until after I, she said that the date that I wanted um, would work. And so I don't know, 200, um, if the COA feels 200 is too much to ask for a specific program, um, especially given that we've had her before, she's excellent. We're not expecting a huge crowd. We don't want a huge crowd. We could I do 20, 25 comfortably. Um, but some kind of split. If you wanted to do that, I mean, I it's just, just, but this is for entertainment is typically something that the friends have done and the COA has not done. Right? So you're asking for $200 over and above the thousand? No, 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 to be in the thousand. Oh, and my vice president and I both. Okay, but I was asking my board if they're comfortable that we typically have um, paid for programming to the tune of either a hundred dollars or 125. Um, 200 is a little bit more and you know I wanted them to think about it's going to be a smaller number of people. She, draw a good crowd. she does draw a good crowd but um, is that $200 and the $25 extra? Yeah. She yeah. That was in the past was 125 plus 25. And, and you can see that was, we, had, we haven't had it for three years. My whole price of gas has gone up. Yeah. So if you're okay, she is definitely worth it. People love her. She plays the accordion and it's like she has a full band there. Um, but if, if the COA is okay with, you know, a, a you know, greater amount, and the friends have already approved the funds. And what's the date on that? Um, she couldn't do the, the 17th, which is fine because it's a very busy day at the center. So Wednesday the 16th, the day before March 16th. Yeah, day, Wednesday the 16th, one o'clock, right before um, St. Patty's Day. So we'll be decked out for, you know, green and... Will it be um, eating involved with... No, I'd say we get refreshments. We'll probably have yeah. a meeting with people. They might want to stay calm and want to have something to eat. Well, something sweet. You know, yeah. some some punch, you know, things like that. Green. Yeah, green. <laughs> okay, so what, thank you. Do we have a time? One o'clock. Thank you. Can I go back to the beginning of all the business now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's, That's okay. Just because the friends are here, get it all done. Right. Right. I agree. Uh, we were going to discuss the uh, food pantry update. Uh, food pantry is going well. Um, Janet Huebner, our Outreach coordinator has asked me again when we will consider doing letting allowing people to come in and shop themselves, um, knowing that we're feeling that we have to do it on an appointment basis now. They can't just come and show up. And so just wanted to run this by you. How if you feel that March is too soon or April? Um, and I think we're going to find we'll probably have maybe 50-50. I would say that the people who get deliveries may want to continue with their deliveries. Um, other folks, I know people really, um, 
appreciate that we have some really neat things at the pantry. And you can't, even though we have a very comprehensive list that they fill out and they get so many groceries, they can't always see that we have these extra things, these spices, these, I don't know, things that come in once in a blue moon. So I don't know how you feel about the state of affairs and, you know, with COVID and we have to see what happens. You know, for us to make a decision today, I don't think it would be very prudent. Okay. We don't know exactly. It does look like it's starting to mm -hmm. decline, but it's not over yet. Okay. There's four variants that have evolved from the uh, uh, Omicron. There are now four variants, but they said that the uh, the shots that you get for the Omicron should come in over too. We'll well, see. I can attest that there are people still getting the virus, even though they've had the shots and the booster. And as of last week, the hospitals have all been closed tight because I've had family in the hospitals. That's one point where I would say, no, we shouldn't be doing it. And two, the ventilation downstairs for numerous people. Very I good point, Carol. It's a very good idea because of the ventilation. That's very good. Has anybody seen? I just I had to stop in at Market Basket yesterday. Did anybody has anybody seen? They've got a blower a ventilator when you first walk in, oh. and um, I mean it, it's commercial size, but it might be something that we want to look into for the food pantry specifically. Yeah. So my vote for right now would be okay. We should not be opening. And I second that because you have this speech coming in. And you seem like you have different things in there that aren't on that list. They'll be picking it up like that and handing it, and we don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's table this to next month and further discussion. Rather than so today. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully by the fall we can say yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's, is, does everybody kind of feel comfortable with that projection? I haven't done anything except to, I do listen to Janet and her, you know, opinion. Um, but I'd love to have, I love the idea of fall, uh, perhaps in fall, because otherwise we're going to be going, okay, maybe in April, maybe in May. Yeah. Maybe, do you know what I mean? And it's, I think it's a month to month thing. We should take it okay. see where we are. Okay. So we'll talk again next yeah. month. Staff updates. Just uh, Melissa Bresick is working out very nicely. She um, she asked me for an assessment the other day, and um, she's a quick learner. She's very positive. She's very personable. She's tech savvy. She's very creative. So um, I'm just I'm hoping that this is something that she enjoys because this is something very different for for, for her. You know, uh, working with seniors just came on um, in the last two years to do, you know, doing Meals on Wheels. She loves it. She loves her interaction. So cross your fingers that, you know, that will be a good fit for her. She's an excellent fit for us. But um, again, not having, you know, I, I've i come from this industry. I've been in it you know, almost, almost 30 years, 14 years, 14 in Huffington. And uh, well, then go to pond. Um, so, I mean, this is my passion. I'm not sure, you know, she loves our, she loves our clientele. Um, she is so looking forward to getting involved in the um, craft group. She'll be picking up where Laura left off. And I think she'll, she'll melt really nicely with our crafters. Um, she's hold, hosting a, um, a meeting later this month. She has some great ideas, including right now we have the, um, it's supposed to be a sweetheart tree, but we're doing a sweetheart bulletin board, and you can submit a picture of a loved one, um, a pet, whatever you want. Um, you can email it to us. We'll put it on the board, and so that was one of her ideas. So she's got a lot of neat ideas like that, which is, I think, the center needs. I need to really focus more on administration, mm -hmm. and um, but the center has been lacking in those things. So I think we're we're very fortunate to have her. She's you know a local resident. Let's just like I said. Hope that this meets, you know, her, you know, um, I don't know, still is a need in her to, to do this type of work. So, and has everybody had a chance to meet her? I have. No. Very, very nice. Not in on Wednesday, so don't, you know, try coming down on Wednesday, but uh, yeah, she's very nice. So. What you say with your baby? I was writing something else, but I heard you say that this has been my baby for a long time. Like working with the seniors. Working with seniors. Oh, okay. I said it without. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I thought yeah. there was some particular 
No, no, no. And I didn't get it because I was ready. No. Okay, thank you. Any comments concerning the architectural? So, as you may have just heard, I asked Lonnie, you were, you know, asked, um, we were told that that last meeting he, our architect was supposed to come to was going to be hybrid. Um, I came to a meeting last month and there were two out of the select, three select board members were here. There was no audience or anything, but I'm hoping, because after all the time, effort and the cost going into this project, we deserve to have an in-person and we deserve to have the friends of elders there, um, our, you know, any of our members that are you know, interested. So we'll okay. see what Lonnie says. Get to what you know, I, well, I wrote, I wrote okay. Thank you, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I just think we, we need to do it sooner than rather than later, but I was told yesterday by their admin person that, you know, reminded that all the budget talks are coming up and this might not be a good time, but then we don't want to put it off till after annual meeting. We can't go for anything regarding this for annual meeting because we'll, we'll have missed the deadline, nor do we, are we going to be ready for anything, but um, but it, we need to get the momentum going, right. you know. Okay. Uh, you want to say anything about the annual report? Just that I got confirmation that it was received, and as I already explained last month, we went in with the same numbers, um, the same exact number right. we've gone in for like the last five years. So hopefully, um, I'm going before them the evening of March, the date, and that that might be a potential um, date to go before them regarding the um, architecture program. I'm going um, on March second. Um, myself and other departments will be meeting with the combined FinCon and select board. So that might be that might be a, a choice night for us to um, have the architect. I don't know. I'll wait to see what the money says. Okay. Um, goals and events for 2022. We all have this handout that you gave us with some, all the activities right through the meeting. So I just wanted to point out to you that we are prudently, slowly but surely adding programs again, uh, which really, I think, really feels good at the center for our staff as well as our, for our seniors. Um, only really worked up the, where I normally would have given you something for the whole year last month. We just were just not there yet. So I, mean, I gave you the first quarter, um, including um, we've got three cultural console grants. They're happening. And then the second page is actually 2020 that didn't happen. Okay, we had, we had committed to these projects and these events and it didn't happen because of the pandemic. So what I wanted to ask you is looking ahead and you might want to table it and you might say, you know, if we could even go through some of these things and say, yes, let's do it again this year. No, you know, let's put that one off. Um, you know, for example, we're not gonna, we already did a database um, celebrating New England. Um, through Cultural Council two years, uh, we didn't do it two years ago, we did it um, last year, but so that we can take off the table, but, you know, do we want to do things like May, May bags, basket crafts, and that's something for the craft group, I guess, to come up with. Um, volunteer appreciation, which we normally host in May, that's, I think that needs to be tabled, um, because we haven't had um, a substantial amount of volunteers in, you know, um, participating in the center. Um, Mended Minstrels will possibly, they will be doing a program this spring. Um, I don't know if it'll be in May, I'm thinking it maybe. Pen Pal, we haven't had a Pen Pal program for the last couple of years. Hopefully that'll get back on track sometime. I'm not sure. Backing yep. up to the Mended Minstrels, yep. we will need to establish a date at some point. People have to keep that date open. Yes. Make sure they don't make doctor's appointments. Whatever, you know, for that day. But I will say they started this Monday and they sound wonderful. Uh, even with their singers' masks on, um, and they're a much smaller group this year, but, but I think that'll change. Us, um, take that and, and then the Helen. Bart and Helen. Helen okay. 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 Nice singers, I'm sorry. Yep. So, so, yeah, so I assume we're going to have that in May. Volunteer appreciation would be off the board. Um, Sen June is the uh, Senior of the Year nominations are due, and the friends, um, I'm not sure of the date, if they've chosen a date for their yard sale. Um, yes, you have. It'll be the Saturday following graduation, which I believe is June 11th. Okay. With um, the rain date being June 12th. June 12th, thank you. Wow. Good, good, good. 
Um, let's see, senior center closed. And just to let you know, we've dropped the podiatry clinic for the time being because we lost a lot of our clients, not to COVID, not to death, but because we couldn't hold the host it over the course of the pandemic, people had to go somewhere and they did. And so our numbers went from probably 11 down to four or five. And um, our doctor is coming from Rhode Island, Charlestown, Rhode Island, and he really needs to have bigger numbers. And so I just, I had to let him go for the time being. So I don't know if we'll ever get that back, but we may or may not. See, you know, I don't even know if you even want to think about a cookout this year, um, but that's something we can, we can talk about maybe next month. You know, I think, um, did we even do a grab and go last year? And did anybody remember? So we'll have to talk about that because that's, I think what we decided was we just, we, we couldn't restrict it and say that it's only for 25 or 30 because we know it's such a popular event. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we decided not to. You do the cooking, okay. So we might want to think of grab and go. I don't know. Um, we might have a better idea in another month or two. How, yeah, and, we're, and we can be flexible. We can kind of, you know, and then, uh, you know, the senior T, uh, I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait for another month or so and see if you want to do the last two years, we've done the nice grab and go bags. And we've had a good response. We've had a response from different people, people that maybe wouldn't normally even come to the indoor one. Um, and then we got a lot of thank yous too. Um, that was something that we collaborated with the friends on. Um, so we'll have to kind of, I guess, play it by ear for that and decide how we're going to handle that. We were kind of hoping that we could meet again in person, but we'll, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, the sheriff's picnic, did anybody go to that last year? I know that was modified and I got mixed reviews. I got mostly very positive reviews and then I got a few, oh, we had to wait in a long line type of line of cars. You guys didn't go? Sunrise Apartments, um, several of our residents went. Were they happy? Uh, they were very happy. And they um, took grandkids and kids and oh. um, they everyone in the car got a meal. So they were awesome. very pleased. So, see, I'm glad to hear that because there are other people that are like, well, no, it wasn't like it's been in past years. So. Well, it wasn't. So what can but, you do? So I, I suppose that the, the, they're going to be, um, they being the sheriff's department, will be doing that again. And we will see all that. Shrewsbury. 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 Was it at the park? Yes. I, I did, did not go. Green Hill Park? Not Green no. Hill. Um, down by the lake. It's, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know the name of it. I was going to say Scandinavian, but that's not. Yeah. Right. No, I think it is. Scandinavian? No, that's a, something like that, though. And I will say, they call it SAC. Yeah. SAC, yeah. So that we'll, we'll be definitely advertising that again. Um, they collaborate with us. They we we take in the, the counts, the numbers, and the names. And um, did they bring us anything from the government? They did. They did. And they actually just brought us hand sanitizers, medical masks. Just recently, I've got a new um, a new contact um, there. But yeah, no, they've been very very good to us to all the centers. I should say. I think one thing we really want to get back on board if we can is the picnics at the town beach. Um, that was very good. Yes. Was really, really and then, good. people need that. It's just such a it's such a nice time. I don't know if anybody's heard. Is the library going to even consider doing the cardboard boat race this year? Do you know what cardboard boat race? Oh, I don't believe so. I have not heard any. Are you are you involved with the library? I'm not involved with the library, but I am involved with um, Joan Calder, okay. who is on the. Uh, Mendon Nitmunk committee. Oh, this is true. And they have to go through that. They have to go through. Okay. Okay. So um ice cream social. And again, well, I guess we'll just have to play by year. We typically do that in August. Uh, we would want entertainment for that. Um, nothing's been scheduled yet. Um sure's yes. Senior of the year. Um haven't looked at the dates, but I think I think we're all hoping that we can be back on track. Um this year for an indoor event. And I've got to say, John, John Trainer's program brought to light. I had no idea that the Senior Citizen Day dinner had been at many places. It wasn't never. It was never just at the Unitarian Church. 
You know, yeah. I mean, it's our hope that it will eventually get the studio. Yes. I did it the 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 yacht club. Oh, yeah. no, that's where they cook it. That's where yeah, they cook that it. Yeah, way back. Yes, way it back. Does, because since I've been on the council and you've arrived, it's been at the Unitarian Church. Yes. But before that, Carol, there are many other locations. So, what, like those of you who watched the video, I don't know if you've seen it yet. <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah. really, he did such a really good nice job. And you interviewed Tom Iron. Mm -hmm. Tom brought up, because Tom's a member of the Lions Club. Well, he brought up the fact that for the past two years, because they haven't had the dinner, they've given gift certificates to restaurants to the seniors of the year. But what they, but that way they're not the others. All the other seniors that we're honoring aren't getting anything, so they really feel like they want to get back to the dinners if they can, because they like to give something to all the seniors. Senior Citizen Day. Senior yeah. Citizen Day, right? But that, and that was also that was their choice to give those gift certificates. We didn't. We didn't um, suggest oh, no, that. You know, they, did it they were very generous, yeah. but, but it's going to be a hard act to follow. You know? Right. I know. So, so um, they didn't spend the money that they would have not always spent on the Oh, dinner. that's true, too. Yeah, so and also, the friends the friends have helped out with that, too. Because mm -hmm. that dinner, that dinner, that and also the former corned beef and cabbage dinner that the uh, Faith Baptist mm -hmm. Church did, yeah. those are both very expensive. Right. You know, the price of chicken is going yes. up. So, can you mention that? will be. So, um, you know, then we look into the fall. The Blue Shark Clinic will probably, unfortunately, never be back at the senior center. And I think that's because we don't have, um, you have an entrance, but you don't have a separate exit, you know. And I think that that's why they got away from us and went up to the school. And you could go in one door and out another. I don't expect it. That's what Missy had told me. Um, and I don't know if people know, but um, Missy um, from the Board of Health has taken a job in another town. Yeah. Oh, I'm yes. going to really miss her. She was, I oh, called her, no. thanked her. She helped I us so much. I saw her on the way. Tomorrow's her last day. No, she helped us out. I mean, she kept us in, in the loop with um, regarding vaccines and, and other information, health information. So um, the town is very it's unfortunate that they're going to lose her. No. You know, she's been doing it for a long time. She knows the ropes. 20 some odd years, maybe? At least. She went to school with my younger son. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, she's a, she's a great person. Yes, she um, is. So they're coming into October. No flu shot clinic, most likely. The friends, I don't know if you, if there's any word if the Lions are going to do their country fair. But you'll you'll keep us posted. I will keep you posted as soon as Tom tells me. Okay, and if you know, yeah, I've heard under oh, currents that you folks might be doing the Oktoberfest again. We're contemplating, we're contemplating that. Yes. That would be that. I'll tell you, that was one of my favorite mm -hmm. events. It just brought in, you know, the public, and it just really yeah. kind of set a nice tone. Is for, the town planning to do the um, autumn fest or the Lions Club? Yeah, I think they're thinking on it. I nobody the started. Oktoberfest. You're talking about something separate. Oh, you yeah. mean the country fair? Yeah, the last the country fair. They usually have that in August. No, 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 October. No, oh, it's usually it Columbus, Columbus Day. Columbus weekend. weekend. Oh, that's right. That's it's right. right before the friends kind of do. They yeah. they're usually given a couple tables there, and they yeah. have their fair if they're going to have their And the friends at the fire department, the fire department, they, they seem to call themselves. Yes. Day. It's the Lions yeah. Fair, and I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I was up at the fire. Mm -hmm. I was at the firehouse and they came down to the Lions Fair. Oh, after I think they've changed it because it's been, I think they changed it to that. It was during like on a Wednesday during the week because um, I know we've provided transportation for folks for that. But yeah. well, we'll just have to wait and see. So those gift baskets that were sponsored by the various groups yeah. that use the center, they, they haven't been using the center. No, we've had the Lions, we've only, we've only had a couple using yeah. it so far. That's a big money maker. Lovely theme baskets. But maybe they, if you contact them, maybe they will be willing to put these back together again. Well, that's something that the friends do. Yeah. That's not just, I'm just saying, yeah. contact a different group to see if they would be willing to do a basket, even though they haven't been Even though they haven't. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they might be. People are very generous, you know. Yeah. Of course, asking. Yeah. Okay. Um, put that on your list. That's my list. list. <laughs> Writing it down. Is Faith Kennedy doing we'll yoga classes? Yes. <laughs> we're doing um we're doing chair yoga, chair exercise, whichever you want to call it, on Tuesdays. We just started Tuesdays and Thursdays. We've got a great response. We've got new people. It's really um we've got new people and then we've got people that have been with us for a long time. So 
-hmm. for the chair yoga. For chair, and we're hoping, um, we're hoping again when when we feel that it's appropriate, we're hoping to add an evening yoga class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that would be traditional yoga. And so let's talk about when we feel that the timing is right for that. Mm -hmm. That will probably have to take place downstairs in a larger space. Um, you know, we used to hold it upstairs, but it's really, you can just see how. Yeah, we used to have about eight mm -hmm. at a time. Yep. And that was good for that space upstairs. Mm -hmm. But that was good pre-COVID times. Is it pre good? Pre-COVID, yes. Is it good now? So yes. I know she's, she's ready, willing, and able to do it. Um, and that class really just pays for itself. I mean, I don't think we have to, we don't have to pay for anything through the grants or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, I know people have asked about when are we going to get back to that. Um, veterans going into November, Veterans Appreciation um, will be on board to do whatever we need to do. And hopefully it'll be an indoor breakfast because we, last year, we got a lot of veterans really lamented, but we had great turnout, but we, people really want to get back and they miss seeing one another. Um, Scouts food drive, that's going to that's gonna go on just as well as it always has. The, the Nipmuc leave program went on last year. Um, they unfortunately only took, I want to say took three people this past year. Um, some years they've taken five, some years they've taken nine. It just, this is the kids doing leaf breaking for seniors that maybe don't have family members to help them with it. Um, we haven't had aging well for a number of years. Um, we'd love to get back to that for the for the kids' sake, over the nursing students' sake, over at PBT, and for our seniors. We'll have to wait and see. Um, Greater Boston Food Bank just was off the table this year. I don't know if we'll ever get back to it. It's too bad because it was a good. Um, supplier for nice us to get a lot from them a lot yeah a lot. but that was big we're in we're in such good shape carol right now that we don't really need it um and then also on to november at the beginning you know we still haven't done our 30th anniversary so we have to which we're now on what our 32nd anniversary but you know what my husband and i are the same i think we're, we're we never celebrated our 30th we're now on 31 so um we so just had 30 also you guys did? January. Oh. You got January, too. We're um September. Oh, September. 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 Oh. Gosh. Okay. Um, let's see. And then in December, we did manage to do the, the holiday lights. We did do the Nutcracker last year, or this year, mm -hmm. despite the pandemic. The holiday dinner, we did a grab and go. So we'll see if we'll be back indoors for that. Um, we'd love to have the kids from schools, um, Ms. Go or Nipmuc, but who knows if that's going to happen this, this year. Yeah, yeah, they probably haven't been able to rehearse. They probably haven't been meeting and rehearsing. Yeah. yeah. But also, you know what? I have to say it. The kids, I think the kids spread the virus amongst themselves, and I don't know that we want to invite them any time soon, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, but it's not going to be a long way off. Yeah, it might be better. It might be better. Let's hope it's going to be better. Yeah, but I think in the meantime, if you look at the first page, you know, for the first quarter, I think we're doing good. Scrabble's up and running. We've got four people to, you know, anchor that. We've got a second board. Diane, you know, asked about getting a second board. So now we've got a second board. We have more folks wanting to play. And that was Jim Buckley, our historian, um, Indian historian. It was his idea to get that back going um, so far so good. VNA blood pressure clinic is going to start up again next month. Um, they'll come once a month, just as they did before, first Tuesday of the month, and uh, from 11 to 12, and that'll be posted. And then, again, we've got other grant information, grant classes that were approved. Um, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that should be a very fascinating one. In uh, May, and then um, and I'm trying to do the grant programs on Wednesdays because that's when we do have an open space. Because what we're doing, just so you know, where staff is being very patient, we're basically breaking down, putting up, breaking down, putting up, cleaning, breaking down, cleaning. You know, we're having to, you know, to make room for the exercise class, and then to you know put and put the privacy wall up, and then take that down and put the, the table and chairs up for lunch, and then make sure everything's cleaned up and mm -hmm. sanitized. Everybody's kind of doing their part. I'm gonna say, I can't say enough about this now. Just um, they're doing it. Um, I have a question on yep. the Valentine luncheon. Yep. 
February 10th. Earl is going to play the piano. Yeah. Um, where are we with that? We just we have 20 people have signed up so far. Um, and Earl's going to be playing the piano just as he has the last. Earl, do you remember how many of you have been doing that for so many years? The only difference is we're doing Tri Valley meals, uh, pre prepackaged meals. We're not doing a cooked meal this year. We usually we do pasta or something red, the meatball, something like that. So on the notes it here, it says grab and go. Yep. So what happened, Carol, all of our meals, um, we're choosing to stay with the prepackaged meals because we can easily do grab and go. Every meal that we offer, we're having between six and eight people getting their meals to go. They're choosing not to come and eat them indoors. And they're taking them with them. So, um, yep, this will, people can do that too. Will there be some kind of a sweet dessert tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. Of the 20 that are signing up, are some of those going to be grab and go? Yes. Be yes. I think we have six grab and goes. Mm -hmm. it'll, be, it'll be small, it'll be modest, but we're bringing back a, you know, a lot of people that haven't been to the center in a while and they've needed it. They needed the socialization. Mm -hmm. Can I go back to May? Yep. For the pen pal luncheon of the four writers. I think maybe the pen pal should be put off in this really Oh well, we're not there. We're not even on it yet. Um, so this is this is from 2020, and I just used it as a template. Okay. But yes, you're absolutely yeah. And we don't know, Diane, if it will start again right. next fall. You were our last coordinator, were you not? You want to do it again? Or just we've barely done that. Yeah, it's been a little bit because it was so there were a few individuals that just came back at me. Well, how come you want this one? Why aren't you doing it that way? Yeah. yeah so I, I just kind of, gee, <laughs> when we do bring it back, you know, it could be it can be a whole new program. But who knows? What this, it may be. Who knows if the school's going to want to do it? With us, you know. But I know. I know. I've talked to some of the teachers, and um, I talked to a newer teacher, and she was very disappointed. She said she had just moved up to the fourth grade level, and she said I was hoping that my class could, you know, get an out program. But you know, another time. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm. It wasn't that it was a horrible, horrible experience, but it, it was something that it was a lot of running around. Yeah, a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I think Janet did it for three years. Peg did it for you know, say three years. Mm -hmm. I think um, Ruth O'Grady did it for mm -hmm. a number of years. Marilyn did it. Did you remember Marilyn? Um, oh gosh, she was way back when. Um, she was she was on I think right after Ruth or before Ruth. I can't remember. But yeah, so everybody's had their turn. You know, mm -hmm. I would possibly. Let Melissa, you know, jump in on that one. It's a good opportunity for people, especially to get to know the people at the school, which she already does, having children in the school system. But might give that some thought. And if she, if I feel that she has the time to devote to it, maybe we can go back to help her. It's kind of time-consuming, you know. Don't you want her to be up running with the news letter? Yep. Yep. It takes a lot of time. It does. If you want to show up, you're going to start right away on the next one. Well, so you know what? Maybe it's a two-person job, you know. The other thing is that we just stress to the seniors, you know, if letters are being picked up on such and such a day, get your letters there. Don't come in and sit there while I'm waiting to bring the letters to the school, writing these letters. I think I think one thing that I don't know if you did that others did. I think Peg might have done it. Peg mm -hmm. always gave them a date, like three days before she actually needed it, because if you wait till the day of, it's, oh, you know, but then you get up and go, gee, you can't have the letters by such and such a day. Why don't I just send letter back? Yeah. Uh, well, you know. I know. Well, that's because they're eager. They're eager and they want their letters back. So that's good. But um, I guess like, any other questions or suggestions? And we'll just we'll kind of tweak this as we go. But grab and go meals have been working out okay. I do look forward though to the time when we can serve people a real meal. Um, who knows? Maybe that will be this summer with the, uh, you know. Cook up. You'll still need more volunteers. Yeah. Well, like, we've been we've been adding you know some new volunteers here and there. We've also been bringing in some new people too. So, you know, when we bring them in as as um, visitors, we have to kind of let them kind of come in and get acclimated before we pounce and say, hey, do you want to become a volunteer? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it was scary. <laughs> yeah, we did. We had two two new ladies come in yesterday for exercise and crafts, and it was um. And I was thinking, oh, she'd be great at helping with lunch. <laughs> she'd, be, she'd be good on the COA board or something like that. I know that's some place that we're looking to. Mm -hmm. That's that's going to be televised. Yep. We're looking yes. To 
<laughs> a very rewarding, rewarding um, position, right? Yes. Okay, that ties up the uh, old business and now we start new business, the shine mailing and the health insurance. So just to bring you up to date, um, Shine has, they did it last year and they're ask, asking us to participate again to provide them with um, mailing addresses for people under 65 by a year or two. And what they do, uh, let me see if I have my card here. Janet and I just got our, yeah. So what they do is they send out this brochure turning 65 um, in the mail and it makes a younger person aware that there is health insurance counseling. It's free. It's wonderful. And so um, we did it last year and we'd like to do it again. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I told him that I would get back to him today. And um, yep, just and it's it's a good thing too because it will allow us to update our our mailing list. You know, Carol has to scoop. Um, it'll allow us to update our mailing list, but to supply them with the, the names and addresses. And the only for one purpose, and that's this to send out this one. What's the name of the car in China? It's Chet. Towards Dickey, towards Dickey, yes. And um, he's excellent. He's really he he jumped in when our past um, person who was Larry Golden also excellent. When he had to suddenly um, give a notice, um, Chet jumped right in, and he comes on Mondays every Monday afternoon that he's needed, and he will see up to four people. Um, our biggest problem is space. You know, he's he has to use the upstairs space for privacy, and it does that does kind of prevent Janet from having an appointment there as well. So, so that's how do you change the names of all the our town clerk. 65? Our town clerk. Oh, every okay. year I get a list of 60 plus because we need it for veterans. We need it for CBT and all that. And Janet needs it for her, her records too. Um, that was something that we talked about last month. Okay. Because I made a note, it was on the open forum. Yep. The number of seniors in town is so. So, so I can give you that number. Um, okay. Well, the number of people in town hasn't gone up that much. The number of people in town is only six thousand three hundred nine, and I think last year it was like six thousand two hundred and eighty-seven. So. The number of individuals in town hasn't increased that much. The seniors have gone up to 1,558, which, and I don't have my stats from last year. We're still working on stats. Um, um, this, when I first came here, we had 608 seniors. Then it went up to 938, and then it went up to 12. Now we're mm -hmm. up to 50, and we knew this was gonna happen because the baby boomers are all coming of age. So, um, so it's over, it's about, it's still about 24%, 24% of the seniors. So the seniors really have some clout if they want to. So, okay. Um, yeah, a little bit of that. Um, are, uh, two final things that are my, my plate. Well, I shouldn't say two final things, but two things on my plate that we've got invitations from Folkdale. I am, I'm thrilled. I don't know if any of you know, since I came here, I have been trying to get AARP to come to come counsel and, and do taxes, prepare taxes at our senior center. First year I was told, no, you're too small. The first year I was, or second year I was told, no, you don't have a private space. Um, so we made the upstairs office, which you've used that before. And then um, three years ago, I recruited five people, five people that were interested in me coming counselors. I was told you don't have enough count. There aren't enough counselors. Five people, of the five people, two have gone through to actually become counselors. And I was told, no, you can't have them there in Menden. I was, I just been beside myself. So this past month, I got a call from Hopedale. I know. Hopedale knew, yes, exactly, bye. Bye, Carol. Hopedale knew exactly what I was talking about with all those statements I just made. You're too small, you, you, know, you won't have enough volume, you, you don't have a private space. Hopedale was able to snag the AARP tax program because another entity in Hopedale wouldn't comply with the COVID or couldn't comply with the COVID regulations. So Hopedale, again, they want us to have a certain volume. And I believe you me, I would have, I would have done what I needed to do to get that volume. She has offered to us, um, if you have clients that need help with their taxes and meet, meet the requirements, you know, low income, low to moderate income, 
send them here. In the past, we've sent them to Milford Library, Milford Senior Center, Bellingham, Franklin, only to be have them be turned away. And this year, when the calls started coming in, Janet researched it online and said, okay, there's Milford, there's Milford Library, there's Milford Senior Center, there's Bellingham. And I was felt positive that one of our clients was able to get into Bellingham. But again, in the past years, we're told, no, you know, they can't say, no, you don't live in our town, but they can say, oh, no, we don't have any appointments. But to have another town say, we want your people. And we had, we had just sent someone to them. Um, right after we found, we looked at the list and we said, Oakdale's on them. I sent someone to them because we do, we reciprocate with Oakdale. If they need, if they need durable medical equipment or things like that, we will help them. And so very pleased to make this partnership. Because even though AARP is telling us we can't host it at our center, you know, and, and I have recruited people that are now active AARP counselors, um, they can't come to us, but they can now go to Hopedale. So that's is it only for lower income? It's low to, to moderate. Um, you can't have real. It's going to be a simple form, you know. Yeah. But if you're one that you know, um, yeah, if if you have a lot of schedules and stuff, that's probably not the place yeah. for you. And is there an age with? What age? Um, I think it's 65. 60, oh. Yeah, 65. Okay. Yep. Is there a man help somebody wants to do it in the residential Yes. Oh, yes. Ours is yes. So that brings me to the next thing. Um, they have an invitation for us to join them in transportation. And I did have a chance to bring this up to Peg uh, before she left on her vacation. What happens with Hopedale? Hopedale part has part long partnered with Milford for their medical rides. Um, Milford takes care of everything. Um, I think Hopedale probably chips in for repairs for the van and things like that, but Milford does the scheduling and all that. Well, Hopedale just recently, recently could have been two years ago, got their own senior van through the state program. Um, not the kind, um, this is different. This is one where the state mass DOT does all the scheduling. So Hopedale's not using it enough and I don't know if you've heard me over the years, you know, um, other people were threatened with losing their vans because they weren't using them enough. Well, Hopedale needs to use their van more. And what they offered to us is a partnership, not for medical rides. And Peg, when I brought this up to Peg, Peg said, no, we want to do our own medical rides. We have more control for our clients' sake um, in that area. But for other things, it could be for grocery shopping. It could be for, um, you know, I was thinking some of our residents that have even moved to Hopedale, to to Atria Draper Place, wouldn't it be nice if they could use a van to come to the Menden Senior Center? Right now, they're asking for friends to bring them to the Senior Center. But um, so yeah, I just wanted to bring that to your attention that that's something. And so it's in um, Massachusetts RTA van. And um, yep, so they're looking at grocery shopping, Target, Walmart, um, you know, regional other regional um, locations. Shared errand van is what she's calling it. So, so I don't know. Really all the details of this. Right? Yeah. You really it, it'll, it'll probably be them more so than us. But what will happen is um, we will call, say, we will call, I don't know if we'll be calling Hope Deal or we'll be calling the um, MWRTA, but we'll, one of our entities will be calling them and setting up the rides or scheduling the rides. Um, but I think. It's worth a try. I don't know if you remember when Kevin was on the board, he um, proposed that we jump on board with Milford. Remember the Milford Van program? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's worth trying, you know. Um, we know that regionalizing can work to a certain degree in some areas, but... Um, is it going to be reciprocal with whatever it would be? Our van is strictly ours for medical. Oh, okay. so for their medical rides, they're going to use the Milford van. This right. is a van that they have for errands. It's going to be, you know, errands. Um, yeah. would be a, we would be partnering. They, they, they need more people, so they use more. But what, they're not going to expect us to provide our van nope. to them. Okay. No, nope. no. Nope. Would they open it up for Fridays? Maybe I can check. I think that their, their center is only open in half a day, but I don't know. That's a good point. A question for Very good. Thing. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, I think mean, that we've gotten calls. You know, can we use the van on a Friday? Yep. I know we're closed, but I don't want to add that. Yeah, we just we don't have drivers for Fridays either. Uh, I did ask about 
possibly getting more hours for our driver driver slash custodian this year. And I was told no. Um, you know, I think we have to build up our numbers again, but our drivers do so much more than drive. You know, we keep our building going. So just those were two really nice, you know, things to consider. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled with ARP, and we will definitely be. Uh, I think I already have advertised that one. Hey, one more open forum. I just have one thing I wanted to bring up. I'm just wondering if you could give us an update on how the fuel assistance program is working. Okay. Uh, we're just we're very frustrated. Um, I'm I'm pleased my clients have really kind of sailed through, but I've had the same clients year after year after year, and so I kind of I they were approved last year. I make sure I give them all the same documentation. Um, I think Gwyneth had some frustrations where it's a newer staff at Smock, and she's some of her clients are having so many hoops to, to jump through. Um, it's no fun. It's no fun. Um, but uh, I'd say the average average household is getting about between five and eight hundred dollars in funds. Some are getting over a thousand. It depends on their income. But for me personally, mine have I've been lucky because I say to my clients, I said, please, as soon as you get that word that you're approved, let me know. Um, but so just there's just a few little snags, and it's just. You, you know how we used to do it Earl, where we would give them a copy, an exact copy. So I say, bring your copy from last year, and then we'll make sure, especially if it went through last year. No. But it's a new client, it's a new um, group of uh, workers down at SMOC, and it's it's kind of frustrating. They're very, very friendly, very pleasant. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, it's a lot of... It's a, All the regulated. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, open forum. Has anybody, anybody want to bring anything up that hasn't been brought up? No, not for me. Thank okay. you. And? No, I just want to say I think it's great that, you know, the friends have a complete roster now and people are willing to yes. take it over. It's great because they were, they were hurt there for a while. Yes, it's so nice. nice. Thank you. I'm now, sure we're going to enjoy <laughs> this coming year. Now, we just need to build ourselves. We, we're supposed to have seven. seven. Yeah, well, we're down to five, so we're going to get. We'll work on that. Yeah. So, you know, if you know of anybody that's <laughs> friends, yeah. Nice. I just have, I, under open forum, I want to say a couple things. <laughs> Thank you all for your holiday gift to me. It was a gift certificate to the Roast House. And answer to me. Of course, it too. <laughs> I love the roast house. The roast, yeah. the roast house is really nice, so I appreciate that. But I do have just some, some a list of new things um, that are that are going to be happening. Um, we're working with the fire department to for the smoke smoke detector program get that back on track. They will go out to folks' homes and change the batteries and smoke detectors. We don't want anybody getting up on a step ladder or a chair to try to do that. So Janet Hubner will be in charge of that. Um, so we're getting that back on track with Chief Kessler and Lieutenant um, Nunn. Um, let's see, I told you, Ageless Grace. I told, I sent out a couple of flyers to folks. Ageless Grace is coming up next week. And also Trisha Silverman, remember her Earl? Yeah. She's doing a program every month between now and June. So, uh, it's on, on, on uh, Zoom. So nutrition. Oh, nutrition. Pearl and Peg and um, I have all attended one of her programs, different times, but she's very, very good. Um, I gave Diane some information that I got from the hospital on their um, program where they accept Afghans and quilts. Uh, this is something that a lot of our seniors had participated in the past, and so we were the conduit that would bring the um, items to the hospital. They thanked us for our past efforts and they um, wanted to let us know that they're back on track. And so Diane and, and Dottie have looked at making some donations and Diane's also gonna talk to her, the, the knitting group, the yarn works group about that, about the Afghans in the hospital. Very much appreciate those. And they use them for cancer care patients. They can't take children's ones anymore because they don't have children at the hospital, but they, um, Definitely want those for adults. And they had certain parameters, and Diane's all well over there. Yeah, Milford Hospital. And then, uh, so we've been, I've been working a lot on getting programs set up for the future, not too soon, but Tri Valley is going to be back on track. We're hoping, I would like to do their regular caregiver program, 
We've done their caregiver program, their savvy caregiver program for people dealing with a loved one who has Alzheimer's, and then we've done matter of balance a couple times. I would like to do another caregiver program. It's time. We have a lot of, especially after the pandemic or because of the pandemic, because of COVID, people are hurting. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity for caregivers to get the support they need. So I'm working with a new representative from Tri-Valley for a caregiver program. And then uh, we have another program coming up for dealing with fraud this spring. And then I told you about the fire department. So caregivers, fraud, fire and fire or smoke detectors. Okay, uh, nobody has anything else or any questions, whatever. I uh, adjourn our meeting. And it looks like uh, 11, almost 11.15. Talk at 11.15. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Larry. 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 Thank you, Larry.